All right, folks, welcome to another beer review. I was due to be doing a live stream the night of recording this, but she couldn't really be asked. Do you know what I mean? So uh, I'll probably still end up having uh, a couple of beers, but it's at that time in the month where the beer fridge is a little bit empty. There's just stuff that I don't really want to drink. I've still got the, as you can see at the top there, Still got those uh, Belgian beers from Lidl, which I don't know. I just don't like casually drinking Belgian beers because I don't really get that much enjoyment out of them. So, um, yeah, I've been, uh, oh, nice scratch. I had to go to the shop, so I picked myself up a four pack of shipyard. That's when you know it's getting bleak. But um, I had something a little bit special, which I was going to like save for like around Christmas time or whatever. But it's easy to get hold of, Jesus. And um, if I like it, I can buy a couple more bottles to save till Christmas. Because we all do that, don't we? Where we think, oh, I'm going to have a nice Christmas stash. Doesn't really come into fruition. So today, as part of uh, Vocations or like Barrel Age series, to celebrate the seventh anniversary... We've got a bottle of the special release mint chocolate a stout barrel aged milk mint chocolate stout barrel aged 12.2 percent abv uh, in celebration of the brewery turning seven years old we have selected six beers from our growing barrel age program a big thank you to all our customers for helping us reach this milestone uh, mint chocolate stout luxurious minty and bittersweet flavors give way to a sophisticated after-dinner style dark chocolate enhanced by barrel aging over nine months in bourbon. Certainly looks the part and um, yeah, vocation. One of the breweries that I've really sort of um, used the supermarkets to excel and really, you know, get their name out there um the discussion about you know supermarket beers and that sort of stuff is one that still rages on and uh, i try to have a, a good balance of trying to support like bottle shops and online web shops and when i'm out and about i'll always pick up like some cans out of a beer fridge but you know sometimes necessity um comes into play and you can just pick up some really quite good beers from the supermarket so it's sort of like that that balancing act but anyway very nice and uh, that banana imperial stout that they did a while ago was pretty nice as well to be fair so i don't know i don't think i've ever had a beer that has mint in it i think the only other one i've had was like a, a fry geist beer culture beer although i have like a i've, I've had a mojito style beer before but I don't think I've ever had like a a minty stout. So I'm quite interested to see how this is. I mean, I do like the odd after eight. <sighs> On the nose. There's like that subtle hint of, of mintiness coming through. And there's a very subtle bourbon sort of element. But to me, it's more about the dark chocolatey malts. It's not really like a roasty, toasty sort of aroma. In fact, there's really not much coming out of the glass in terms of aromatic qualities. But beer is jet black in the glass. As you saw, head dissipated straight away. I don't have a, a vocation glass, so uh, a fellow Leeds-based brewery will do. Certainly looks the part. Let's see what it smells like. Well, I've already given it a sniff. I jumped the gun, didn't I, and started sniffing before I tasted. Well, oh my God. Formulate a coherent. Oh, my goodness gracious me. Formulate a coherent sentence, you utter fool. You fool. Try to have a team's meeting, you fool. Anyway. Not what I was expecting it to smell like. There was a part of me that thought that sort of like mintiness would rarely emanate 
uh, out of the glass. Can something emanate out of a vessel? I don't know. But, um, you know, when like, you open, like, you know, after eight, so that's what you're instantly thinking about, aren't you? And you open that and you get that, like, mint filling. It's very sort of... It's more like fresh mint leaf as opposed to, like, minty chocolate, like Viscount biscuits or after eight. Anyway. Smells not too bad. No detection at all of 12% ABV. So we'll see what it tastes like. Cheers. What it lacks in minty aromas, it makes up for in minty flavours. But it's not overpowering. There is an almost like mint chewing gum sort of character there. But at the same time, it does kind of taste like you've bitten into an after eight. And it definitely <laughs> delivers on the chocolate. And I don't know if that's picking up on camera, but my stomach is making gargling noises. Like, boy, boy. Where's the 12%? Even, like, the, the bourbon character is very, very, very subtle. Because sometimes even, like, a, a, a relatively low ABV beer that's been... Aged in bourbon barrels. Although it's an a, a lower ABV beer, that bourbon flavour adds a bit of oomph and almost gives the impression that it's a higher ABV beer. Here, it doesn't really seem to have picked up too much of that bourbon barrel aged character. There's definitely a, a casky woodiness to it. kind of get like the aftertaste of bourbon on the back end and that's probably really the only place where the actual 12 percent abv comes into play because there's that sort of like not boozy but like ethanol sort of i don't know how, how best to describe it so sort of like the aftertaste of when you've had something that's like like a whiskey or something like that It's one of those stouts where it's not thin, it's not thick, but there's that sort of like skimmed milk velvetiness to it. I'm not going to lie though, I was expecting a little bit more. Like, I was even preparing for that minty character to completely overwhelm those other flavours. But it's such a subtle, well-rounded and balanced beer, which in and of itself isn't necessarily a bad thing. deceptively drinkable for a 12% ABV Imperial Stout. It's okay. Um, I know they did other beers in this uh, celebration and I think it's got that sort of it's special but it's probably one of the more, I've not had any of the other beers um, and in fact, I've not really had too much experience with the barrel aged stuff, although from what I've heard, very good stuff. But Vocation are a great little brewery. Well, they're not really little anymore, are they? They've got 
Assembly Underground in Leeds, and then they've got Society in Manchester. <clears throat> they are one of the breweries that are dominating the the supermarkets. Pretty much in every supermarket, you'll be able to pick up a vocation beer. Um, so I think it's got that sort of like, it's a big beer, but it's a bit more accessible. Although you read the label and you think, oh, that, that could be a bit. Mm. But behind that label and the beer in the bottle itself, something that, unless you've never really drank an Imperial Stout and you're starting to get used to these sorts of beers, might get a little bit more, bit more overwhelming for that sort of um, palate and drinking experience, but it's all right. Um, but I don't mean that in that it's just okay sort of um, thing. I'm just, there's, there is a tiny bit of disappointment there. But you've got a good, fundamentally, you've got a good Imperial Stout. Um, I can't remember how much this was. It was about like either four or five quid. For me personally, I'd wait until you get those moments in Tesco's where it's like, there's like a pound or 50p taken off it. Uh, but even at the price that it's currently at, I'd still say it's great to see a beer like this in the supermarket. But I don't know. Maybe it's that entitled, uh, and you know, that culture of entitlement and expectation uh, that's working against this beer on a personal sort of level. But it's got some really nice, sort of, it's left it uh, a nice film on the glass itself. And it does remind me, flavour wise, of not necessarily. After Eights, but like an Aldi or Lidl version of After Eights. But the chocolatey character, absolutely spot on. Really, really is. And would I buy it again? I probably would, but after drinking it now, I would probably wait until it might be a pound or, or 50 pence cheaper. Um, if it's still going to be available in supermarkets. Because I would imagine this would have a, like, a little bit more of a limited run compared to other newer releases in that supermarket setting. And I'm sure you can pick this up, or were able to pick it up at the time, from Vocation themselves. So You don't get that feeling that they've brewed this to strict costing limitations that have been imposed on them by Tesco's. It just sounds like, well, we've brewed these beers. And do you know what? We'll we'll put one in, in Tesco's. Well, yeah, go on. You can have that one. That's the sort of impression I get. It's quite a judgmental um, sort of angle, but... No, it's nice. Now, if you want an Imperial Stout that masks the alcohol really, really well, nailed it. Absolutely nailed it. But... Yeah, it, it is what it is. I'm still happy with it. Glad I got to try it. I would drink it again, but I'm not going to rush out to pick up like three or four bottles. I think me personally, that, um, what was it? Was it that export stout that they did? Which I think they brought out a little bit before this one. Uh, was it called Knockout? Which had the two, like, the, the old fashioned boxes on the front cover front cover on the beer label to me as a stout i think it's a bit of a better um and more enjoyable one but this is something a little bit special it's sure i just heard my name uh but it's it's i don't know it's still sort of still feels a bit bonkers that you can pick up a beer like this from tesco's while you're doing your you know weekly fortnightly, monthly, whatever shop. Do you know what I mean? That being said, though, K 
considering it was brewed for Vocation's seventh anniversary, I think it's one of those beers that they could have just released, like even at the height of summer. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Um, but in terms of presentation, absolutely nailed it. So if you've tried it, let me know your thoughts and opinions down below. What's some of your favourite vocation beers? Uh, I think I'm long overdue doing a, a proper vocation order because the prices are well good. Uh, delivery is cheap. And uh, you can get a lot of beers for your money. Um, and I think that kind of works against trying to be a more conscientious uh, beer consumer. Um, and in terms of buying options but with you know the cost of living and things like that it's a good cost effective way to treat yourself to something a little bit special um and yeah that's it really so if you've tried it let me know your thoughts opinions down below are you a fan of vocation uh what have been your favorite beers what have been your some of your seven anniversary beers because i know they did um different variations and was it life and death or something like that or oh my god what are they i can't remember the can't remember the name anyway <coughs> i digress so go check out vocation pick it up if you're you're in your tesco's and yeah maybe i should have actually done a bit of a pairing clueless eats video and got some after eights or viscount biscuits i don't know i didn't really think ahead did i anyway i'm going to enjoy the rest of this fit uh, this beer and uh, thank you for watching and you all take care stay safe and i shall hopefully see you later